The A-Series kit comes complete with everything necessary to install the lock on the ATM, including a complete set of instructions, a serial number plate, a serial number, the keypad extension, the keypad base, the keypad itself, and then the lock. The serial number is a very important component of the A-Series lock. First thing you should do is remove the serial number plate and the serial number from their respective packages and then affix the serial number to the serial number plate. Then remove the adhesive backing from the back of the serial number plate and position it over the spindle hole on the front of the safe. Inside the A-Series kit, you will find the accessory pack B33. This contains all of the bolts necessary to secure the lock and keypad in place. Now remove the remaining contents of the box. Lift the keypad extension and disconnect the wire from the back of the connection plate. Set the keypad extension aside and now remove the keypad, again disconnecting the wire from the back of the keypad. As you remove the lock from the box, you'll notice there are a number of cables and wires attached to the lock. Set the lock aside and we'll explain what those wires are shortly. Remove the keypad base and set it aside as well. Unravel the wires attached to the lock. You'll notice there's a blue wire, a red, green, and black wire. The blue secure loop wire is designed to have a door switch attached if necessary. Leave it intact if a door switch is not going to be used. The bolt position indicators, red, green, and black, can be attached to an alarm input panel to sense the position of the bolt. If the bolt position indicator wires are not going to be used, they can be clipped off. The A-Series lock system can be used in conjunction with a duress module to indicate an emergency. The duress module is designed to intercept special keypad sequences and then send a silent signal through the connected alarm system. The duress module installation is fairly simple. The module is installed between the lock and the keypad. The lock is connected to the duress module and then the duress module connects to the keypad. The black and red wires attached to the module are normally closed, normally open, and ground. These wires connect to the alarm panel. In preparing to install the lock body, we can clip off the black, green, and red wires as bolt position indication is not going to be tracked in this installation. Do not cut the blue secure loop wire unless a door switch is to be installed. The duress module is attached to the door using an appropriately sized drilled and tapped hole. Remove the cover and temporarily position the module on the mounting surface using the double sided tape on the back of the module. Then thread the keypad cable through the spindle hole. Now thread the communication cable, the wider of the two lock cables, through the spindle hole and position the lock on its mounting plate. Take care to ensure that the duress keypad cable is aligned with the indented raceway on the back of the lock. Secure the lock in place using one of the lock mounting bolts. Then connect the lock cable to the duress module as shown. Finish mounting the lock using the remaining lock bolts. Tighten the bolts diagonally to ensure it is secure. Now for some cable management. Install one of the adhesive zip tie blocks on the back of the lock as shown. Bundle the lock cable and zip tie in place. Also bundle and zip tie the blue wire if it is not to be used with a door switch. Secure so that it won't interfere with the bolt work operation. Route the remaining duress module wires to the alarm panel. Ensure that these wires are secured so as to allow for unrestricted bolt work operation. Reattach the duress module cover using the provided bolt. Ensure that there's adequate bolt clearance either side of the bolt as it contacts and interacts with the bolt mechanism.
Remove the adhesive covering from the back of the keypad escutcheon plate. Thread the communication cable and duress cable through the plate and affix in place. Route the communication cable through the center hole of the keypad extension and connect to the iButton reader port. This connector is keyed. If you have to use force to insert the connector into the socket, you probably have it aligned incorrectly. Now thread the lock cable through the keypad extension as shown. Thread the looped communication cable and lock cable through the center hole of the keypad base. Using the provided bolts, fasten the assembly to the door. Cable management is important in the keypad assembly so that the remaining length of cable does not become damaged when installing the keypad. Using the zip tie block and zip ties, secure the communication cable as shown. After installing the batteries in the keypad, connect the lock cable to the Hiroshi connector. Once connected, test the lock by entering the default code 10 10 10 10 and then pound. The lock will cycle open. Now carefully route the cable between the two 9 volt batteries to the bottom of the keypad. Then snap the keypad on. Test the lock operation one more time using the 10 code. So it's 10, 10, 10, 10, and then pound. The lock will open, turn the handle. After 6 seconds the lock will extend and then close the door. Your installation is complete.